Hey, welcome back to the channel. And uh, tomorrow, I'm, I got a small job to do. Uh, I gotta go help my little brother up cut up a tree. The only problem is, is that my chainsaw, my good old farm boss here, likes to puke or pee gasoline all over you. Uh, went through it once and thought I fixed it and everything was great for a while. And I'm thinking it's probably the vent hose that maybe came off again. Not exactly sure, but we're gonna tear it apart and find out. Now, this is a steel 029. It is a 20 inch chainsaw that I've had, woo, 2000s, so about 21 years. Let's say 20, just to make sure. Um, and it has cut down lots of trees. It has cut up lots of trees. And really, I'm only, I still have the original blade. I try to take care of it. I try to sharpen it when I can. I always keep it sharp. And but I did have to get a new bar. Uh, if you saw some other videos about maybe the face cord or something like that, when I was cutting up the 50 inch in diameter tree trunk, there was a stake, a nail, something that was in there, and it actually broke my bar. Wouldn't move anymore. So had to get a new bar. But that's pretty much all I've done to this darn thing except for you know maintain it and uh take it apart and clean it let's figure out why this thing just pisses gas all over you um so the main things that you're going to need would be torx uh i got some screwdrivers here that are torx all right the main tool you're going to need would be your t-wrench because we need to get this bar off because we're going to cut ourselves so in case you have never taken a, a bar off of a steel before let me show you all right, we got our steel. It is a 029, like I said. So basically, you're going to loosen up these two nuts. Okay, so a couple of things you need to look out for when you do actually take your saw apart. You have two places, uh, two pieces of plastic right here. This basically just guides your chain uh, in case it starts to wa uh, wander back and forth. This will help it kind of get in there. Take a look at those. These are pretty worn, but they're not too bad. We can keep going with those. If they're too worn, worn then you need to get some new ones all right let's take the chain off all right so one thing you do have to realize with the chain do not get it mixed uh tangled up because it is a pain to get out uh all right so other things you want to look for while you're taking this apart look at your sprocket uh this is uh this one's not too awful bad it's definitely worn but we can get a lot more life out of it, so we should be okay. Now all this dirt and grime and stuff like that, we wanna get rid of it. Hey look, I'm leaking gas again. Whew, awesome. So anyway, uh, maybe some carb cleaner, uh, brake clean and compressed air, knock all that out. All right, let's take your air cleaner off. Take your uh, flat-headed screwdriver, should come with your T. There you go, kinda inspect it, make sure there aren't any holes anywhere. This is actually in pretty good shape because I just cleaned it not too long ago. Uh, you kind of want to throw a little bit of oil on this just to be, make sure that the fine dust particles does not get into your engine. Because this is a two cycle engine and we want to preserve it. It is a steel and it should last a really long time. All right, so a couple little anatomy part here. Uh, here's your carburetor. You got your trigger. This will actually open it up. This right here is your choke. So this part here needs to come off. In order for this to come off, your handle needs to come off. So what you want to do is grab a hold of your T-wrench once again. You have two little knobs on either side. Pry these guys off. Whoop, there you go. Don't lose them. Always keep all your parts in a location where you are not going to lose anything. Everything stays in its place. So this is where your torques are going to come in. Let's see which one it is. It is not a 30. All right, looks like it's a T27. I'm gonna take this guy off. You also have a Torx right next to it. You got two of them right down here at the bottom. Aha, there is a third one. I knew there was. All right, so you have one there, you have one there, and you also have one down here. So get those little rubber pieces off, and then your handle can come right off. So we're almost down to the fuel tank. We're not quite there yet, because 
we need to get this uh, carburetor off. You can go ahead and pull your screen off, make sure, inspect it, make sure that it's nice and clean. That one's dirty. We're going to clean that up. All right, so we need to take these two small nuts out of your carburetor, and they are 5 sixteenths. All right, get your little rubber grommet things out of here. That's just for your uh, mixtures. Disconnect your fuel line. You also need to disconnect your throttle button. T27 underneath your handle. There you go. Now this one's smaller than the rest, so keep that handy so you can put that guy back. There we go. So there you got your fuel in, fuel out, return, all that good stuff. There you go. All right. Pull out your ring. So this is the little ring here. Keep that to the side. So now with that ring gone, you should be able just to push into the sides of that rubber hose and then it should come right out just like that all right so what do we got left here we have electrical so you got the kill switch on one side you got your other side on this side okay and just as i suspected my vent tube fell off this right here this is your vent tube that should be going all the way up to here so that it will vent out, not pour all over you. All right, I think I got a temporary solution. It is definitely not permanent. I will not leave it like this. I will order a new vent tube and get rid of this. I just have some old um, uh, fuel line. And what I'll do is actually, I'm gonna plug this up. Now you don't wanna have it completely airtight. I'm gonna actually poke a couple holes in it only because if you're sucking fuel out of here, you gotta replace it with air. That's the reason why you have this vent tube and it's actually a one-way valve. Uh, there should be like a little, you know, ball valve in there or something, not a ball valve, but a, um, like a small ball in there to, uh, keep the fuel from coming out, but let the air in. I don't have that right now, but I will order it. I will get it here and then we will revisit this. So yeah, so next time you see me, and next time you see this, hopefully I'll have my part in, and I'll show you how to put it in, put it back, uh, put it back together. But first, I gotta put it back together because I need to use it tomorrow. Tree's already down. Gotta clean it up. See you in a few. Hey, so it's been a few days, and I my little makeshift part it did okay. It didn't do great, but it is back in the shop, and I do have the right parts this time. So, got my little package here, just one on Amazon. That's pretty much easiest way really to go get it. I uh, did try a couple local places, couldn't find it there. But this is our fuel tank vent. And I know this is probably, since this is my second time actually doing this, I actually got two vents. So I'm gonna have one sitting in my toolbox. So basically all it really is, is you got your little hose. And then you also have, this is kind of like a one-way valve. So basically air can get in, but fuel cannot get out. So basically we're going to, all right, make sure that's in there nice and tight. Now, this is kind of a universal kit. It's not specifically made for the steel, but we're gonna make that work. And so what we're gonna do is find out where it's supposed to go, which is probably a little high up on the, there you go. So we're just going to cut our tube. And then hopefully it fits. Okay. So I basically just cut it off about that far. It does not need to be that long. The only problem that I do see though is that this is kind of a smooth nipple. All right, so here is the smooth little nipple that I was talking about. And this is basically where we're going to be putting it. So you got your little, little guy. There you go. So you have your little, little vent tube on. So you have your front cover here. Now I didn't, I went ahead and uh, put my electrical lines in here. Basically you just stick them right in, right where you can't brought them out. All right, now this is where it gets interesting and fun. Okay, so this little hose right here needs to go through that hole. This hose goes in through the bigger hole down below. Now that's not that big of a deal. The problem though is getting this guy here 
and actually inspect it while you got it in there. If there's any cracks or anything like that, it's not going to run right. Uh, this one's actually still in really good shape. That's why I love a steel, dude. Uh, so anyway, so this right here needs to go through here, but you have to crush it down first. So we're going to get the little hoses on first, and then we can get the big hose. Try to get this guy in first, or else you're going to be fighting it the whole time. Okay, this way so you can see. So basically this right here needs to go into that that little notch right there. I didn't really take want to take the brake off, only because it's a pain in the butt to get on. So we're just going to wiggle our way in there. All right, so this guy's in there. We just got to feed your hose back in. Now if you're going to use pliers, again, be very careful. You do not want to rip, puncture, pull out this hose. There we go. So this is basically what it looks like. So we have that in there. Now it's not going to stay in there very well without your retainer, retainer ring. So make sure you have this in there. Now it is keyed, so make sure you have it keyed incorrectly, or else this will fall out, your engine will stop. Basically you're back in the shop again instead of cutting down trees. Okay, so basically everything else is putting it right back together. You do have your electrical line. It needs to connect right to that lead right there. There are only two wires on this, so one is completely different than the other. So the second one, goes right onto your trigger. Oops. And that will be the black wire. All right, so we got my black wire in, the green and yellow wire is in. We just gotta route it. And of course I routed it wrong. Let's fix that. Right. Now she can go in there. There we go. Alrighty, so just route your wire till it's up out of the way because you don't want anything to get messed with it. You don't want it to get damaged or anything like that. So what do we have left? Well, we need to put a carburetor back on, right? That would be their next step. Now, while it's off, make sure that you compress, uh, use compressed air. It's actually really good. Uh, the only difference though is don't put it on too high a pressure because if you go down in here where your intake, are, uh, intake goes, all of these are just little tiny diaphragms. And if you run too much pressure through that, it's actually gonna rip your gasket or your diaphragm, and then you're back to square one. Uh, these carburetors are relatively cheap, but you don't need to do it if you don't, if you just be careful. If you're wondering which hose goes where, you should not have to worry about it too much because the one down here at the bottom actually lines up with that hose at the bottom. So you don't have to worry your pretty little head over it. All right, so carburetor's on, put your nuts on. All right, just like any other gasket, because there is a rubber gasket behind here, do one side, snug it, go to the other side, and keep going back and forth until it's nice and firm on there. If you just crank down one side, it could get cockeyed. If you look right there, there's a little cavity, and that's where this, this little wire goes to. So make sure you have that in there. There you go. Or the catch might not catch, and then you might not be able to work your throttle. Now, speaking of throttle, you have your throttle linkage. Okay, so next thing you wanna do is uh, put your little rubber pieces in. Gotta still make it look pretty. In case you need to adjust the mixture, you can use those that side right there. Handle, you can put that guy back on. And once again, it is a T27. Filter's not too bad, still oily. All right, so you have your little filter thing here. Just clean it off a little bit, because it is nasty. All right, and basically all this is really doing is trying to keep some of the bigger uh, bigger dirt and stuff like that from actually getting in. This is an air-cooled engine, so if you look inside here, you have all these fins and everything like that. Those need to stay clean so that it can stay cool. All 
All right, so a couple things on the saw itself. Again, use compressed air, get rid of all this stuff out away. Uh, this is your oil passage. So oil will come through here. And then go through the hole in your bar, which will actually lubricate your chain. Now, if you look down in this groove, and basically how they make this, to make it really light but really strong, it's hollow inside. There's a grid inside and you can see all the rivets all the way down. So this is where the chain rides all the way down. Make sure that is nice and clean because you want to have good oil all the way through. All right, so take your compressed air, grab your safety glasses, and make some noise. All right, the other thing you really want to make sure that is nice and loose would be your tying in up here at the end. This is basically a gear that the chain rides on. And actually, if you look at those teeth, you see crud and as the Australians call it, smuts all over it. So give it a good breathe. Just be careful when you actually get this thing spinning because it, it spins really fast. <laughs> Definitely don't put your finger on it. Uh, yeah, I got smuts all over me. Uh, so basically we're just gonna put our bar back on, we're gonna put a chain back on, and then we're gonna crank it up, make sure she still works. So let's do that. All right, always, Associate where it's way your bar, uh, your bar is going to go. This is a farm boss. So make sure you can read it Now your chain Make sure that goes on the correct way So I'm going to imitate like I'm the actual chainsaw running so it's going to go this way That's where the teeth are. So we're going in the right direction I've seen so many times where you try to grab a hold of this put it on a piece of wood and it doesn't cut anything because you got it on backwards Don't put it on backwards. You want to get it around the sprocket there are there you go. So this right here, I'm gonna get my screwdriver that I can show you. Okay, so this right here has a pin. And what this pin does is actually move the bar back and forth. Like if you get too much slop in your chain so it's nice and stretched, you'll loosen up these two nuts and actually you put a screwdriver in, tighten or loosen your bar. It's actually you're moving the bar, not the chain. All right, so before I actually tighten this up all the way, you want to check the tension on your chain. Now, you don't want to have it too tight or else it won't spin very well. I usually take it and I'll pull on it. Now, if the bottom of the teeth barely touches the tip, then I think I'm good to go. If you have it too loose, it falls off. If you have it too tight, it won't spin. So this is actually pretty good. We're going to tighten this down. There we go. Okay, I guess right now it's time to make some noise and make the neighbors mad. Sorry, neighbors. It's a good sign. That's a little more like it. Uh, it took a little bit to uh, get the fuel going, uh, but that actually does pretty well. And if you look on the chain, it's got a little bit of oil on it, so my lubrication is working. Let me try it again. Sweet deal. All right, so hopefully this kind of helps you out of just changing out a fuel vent line. Uh, they do have a tendency of falling off. Uh, it's about the only complaint I have with this steel would be that vent to be falling off. This is the second time that's been, that it's happened. Uh, maybe they could have done a better job. But the rest of it, I love this saw. It has cut so much wood. If you saw some other videos, you have seen a lot of logs huge logs 50 inch log out there i cut with this thing here it took a while I had to go all, all the way around the thing and still uses a sledge and some wedges in order to get it to break off so this thing has definitely seen a few logs in its day so it is running a lot better uh might just go ahead and replace the spark plug i haven't done that in a while so anyway hopefully this helps take a look at all the other ones uh go ahead and subscribe to the channel uh definitely helps us out and go ahead and like it and share it. Why not? Bring more people to the party. So anyway, later. Happy cutting.